Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips without Laurie today. We're sorry, she is sick today. So I'm filling in and my name is Emily. Today we're going to talk a little bit about raw edge applique. Um, before we get started, where is everybody joining us from? We want to give everybody a second to get on. So if you're here with us, tell us where you're from. I'll share with you in like two minutes. Okay, sounds good. While people, while everybody's getting on, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking a little bit about raw edge applique today. And for me, I know that was something that was kind of a little bit of a new technique, um, something that was a little bit different from what I was used to. And so we're going to talk a little bit about some of our projects that we have that use raw edge applique, as well as our new curated home for the holidays it has some projects with raw edge applique. So we've got a few of those here today to show you. So these are a couple of our projects. This is a quilted stocking and it's got some super fun um, snowflake quilting in the background. I don't know if you can see it with that matching thread. Yeah, there you go. So we've got some, some Christmas trees on here and some snowflakes, some cute hearts. Um, and you can see a little bit of this raw edge applique here on the felt along the toe on these scallops. And then we also have this Dear Santa mug rug is one of our projects and I love this one. It's super cute. It's got these little check boxes right here and you get to pick whether you want to check naughty or nice. I guess it depends on who you're giving it to if you want to check naughty or nice. <laughs> so those are a couple of our projects. Um, we also have a couple of tea towels. So this one um, says has a have a perfect Christmas and then there's also one that has a little dog that's sitting on the presents and it says have a perfect Christmas. So you can customize that as well. And then this one here, this let it snow tea towel. I love this one. It's a cute little Christmas in down south where it's a little warmer. <laughs> um, it says let it snow somewhere else. So these are a couple of our projects. We also have um, this one back here on, we have this one on an apron. There's no place like home. Got a cute little house. And then we also have this pillow as well. This fa -la, la pillow and this one's super fun. It's got the chenille on it and this velveteen in the back, this nice red velveteen. So those are a few of our projects. We'll talk about a couple more of them as we continue on today. Do we have anybody joined on with us yet? We have lots of them. So some from Washington, Alabama, Wyoming, California, Kansas, all over. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. We're so excited to have you with us today. We're super excited to talk about this. So we'll get started. So raw edge applique. There are times when we um, choose to do raw edge applique over like a satin stitch as a finish. Um, and it depends on a couple different factors. Sometimes it may be the shape is a little bit weird or funky and it's hard to make a satin stitch look really clean along that shape. Sometimes it's the material that we're using. Um, a lot of our specialty fabrics, we would do a raw edge applique because it looks very clean. This is another example from our curated home for the holidays. This one has a couple different um, specialty fabrics on it. So we have some that are just our regular fabric fabrics. This is one of our silky solids colors. And then right next door to that, we have some red leather. And so this one is also raw edge. And then all the way down here on this other end, we have um, some felt right here. That is raw edge. And these houses, you can see the details on them are very tiny. And if we were to put a satin stitch along this edge, you wouldn't see those cute details. You wouldn't be able to have the cute little windows and doors on these houses. Perfect. So we have, this is another example that's good to show. So this is um, one of our very first test stitch outs for the Believe wall hanging that is a part of the curated home for the holidays. And if you look right here on this fire, um, we tried doing a decorative stitch around the outside of it and it looked a little bit messy. You couldn't really tell that that's what we were going for was the fire. So then we tried again. We just tried with some raw edge applique and this one, um, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about it. And it has, um, we put some backing on the back, but it kind of peeks out the sides. So we decided that wasn't the best option. So we ended up with this. And this has our just raw edge applique on that. That's just cotton fabric under there. Um, and we used a couple different tools that we're gonna talk about today. So one of those tools 
that you can use to get a really clean finish on your raw edge applique is something like Fray Check or also there's Fray Block is another similar product. Um, and these are great, especially when you're doing raw edge applique like on the, the fire or on the houses. Um, you place down your fabric, then you would stitch around the outside of it, and then you would apply one of these before cutting, um, either the Fray Check or the Fray Block. And that you let it dry and then when you cut it it leaves a nice really clean edge so it won't fray after it's been cut it kind of glues those fibers together and they stick really nice so it gives you a really clean finish um, and there are times when I personally am doing raw edge applique that I don't want to use that that I choose not to because I want a little bit of a frayed look on the edge of my my project my design depending on what I'm doing um, and then another tip another thing that we use is something called Terio magic so that's what we used on the fire here along with that fray check. Um, so Terio Magic is a starch spray and it's a pretty heavy starch spray. It's got quite a bit of starch in it. And so as you spray that on there, it gives your fabric a really stiff finish. So when you cut those edges, again, they won't fray as much and it'll give it a really clean look on the outside. So Terio Magic is awesome to use as well. And then a couple other tips. We can show you right here with this project that we have. So this is a little bird, a little leather bird that we put on one of these velveteen zipper pouches. And we'll show you some tips with cutting. So the right tool makes all the difference when you are cutting these pieces. Um, I like to use the little like snips. Um, you can also use like the duckbill scissors or um, something like that that can give you a really clean finish. I like using these ones because they're just a little bit smaller, a little bit easier for me to manipulate. Um, so this right here, like I said, we have leather. And one of the best things to do when you're trimming, especially with a more of a, like a specialty fabric, such as like a leather or a felt or something like that, um, one of the best things you can do when you're trimming it is to lift it up to like 90 degree angle. So you're pulling up against those stitches and that'll help give you a nice clean cut, a clean finish. And that'll help so that the back of your fabric won't show. Um, sometimes like leathers or fabrics like that, the back color will be different than the top color. And so if you pull it up at a 90 degree angle from your stitches, that will keep that back from showing through. So just like this, you pull it up and then you just trim right along those stitch lines, just like that. And then another tip, as you're trimming something, especially if it's got a curved edge like this bird has on its feathers, is don't make lots of little straight cuts, but follow that curve. Keep the cut going as you, as you cut, and that'll help give it a nice clean finish. So as you go, you're turning, pulling that leather up at a 90 degree angle, and following that cut all the way around. And that'll give you a nice clean look and you won't have any little points um, showing underneath there keeps your the back color of whatever you may be using hidden and underneath and gives it a nice clean finish so that's a couple different tips and then we've got a couple other things we can show you here so this um, this little bird that we have on this clasp purse um, he was made out of velveteen so he's a little bit different fabric and velveteen frays really easily. You can see a little bit down here. He's fraying just a little bit. And so when we use this type of material for raw edge applique, if you just even barely pull on the velveteen, it frays quite a bit. So that is a great opportunity to use something like fray check or fray block to keep those threads nice and clean as you're going along. So those are a couple of our tips. Does anybody out there have any questions about raw edge applique? or any tips or tricks on that? Um, we don't have any questions today. Just a bunch of people saying how awesome this tip was and how fun it was. So awesome. thank you for stepping in for Lori today. Appreciate of course. It. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in and getting to hear some of our tips and tricks. If you have any other tips or tricks or things you like to do with raw edge applique, please comment and drop your comments. And so we can share those ideas. But thank you all for coming.